What's going on everyone? Ash here for another round of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Music Identification. It seems I set something of an expectation for myself among fans with my original video identifying the music used for all the short character trailers that debuted during the game's E3 blowout, as many of you have been asking me for more in-depth coverage of Smash Bros. Ultimate soundtrack since then. Well, ask and you shall receive. With so much new content being revealed in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Direct on August 8th, music included, I thought it would be a good idea to take another pass through the Direct and identify all the music that can be heard throughout as the soundtrack for Smash Bros. Ultimate begins to take shape. But I'm not stopping at just the Direct. After all, my original video covered the short character trailers up through Ridley, and as we all know, five new fighters have been revealed since then, so I'll be touching on their character trailers as well. But before we get started, make sure to check out my original video going in-depth on Smash Bros. Ultimate soundtrack if you haven't already. You can find a convenient link to it in the video description below. Also, please note that the timestamps I mentioned in this video refer to Nintendo's own upload of the Smash Bros. Ultimate Direct, which can be found on their official YouTube channel. With that said, let's get started! The first song we hear in the Direct, at the 1 minute and 22 second mark, is of course a brand new rearrangement of Vampire Killer from the original Castlevania, which kicks in just as Simon Lashes Out pops onto the screen. While we don't know yet who is responsible for this arrangement, the first Castlevania game's soundtrack was composed by Kinuyo Yamashita and Satoe Terashima. But as we already know from the Direct, Vampire Killer is hardly the only song from the first Castlevania game that has been rearranged for Smash Bros. Ultimate. About 30 seconds later, at 1 minute 52 seconds, we can hear a new take on Nothing to Lose as the trailer introduces Dracula. Then, as Richter crosses over, flashes onto the screen at the 2 minute and 15 second mark, a new rendition of Divine Bloodlines from Castlevania Rondo of Blood begins playing. As with most of the other Castlevania tracks, we can't say yet who did this arrangement, but Castlevania Rondo of Blood soundtrack was originally composed by Akira Soji, Tomoko Sano, Keizo Nakamura, and Mikio Saito. It's hard to say whether this next one counts or not since it's so short, but I've included it for the sake of completeness. At 2 minutes and 40 seconds, a fresh take on the original Castlevania's stage clear jingle plays as the crossover logo for Smash Bros. Ultimate and Castlevania appears. Hello. At 2 minutes and 59 seconds, we get an encore performance of what we're almost certain is the same rearrangement of Vampire Killer that can be heard in Simon's reveal trailer. Simon's stage is none other than Dracula's castle. Jumping ahead a bit to 4 minutes and 16 seconds, we get a taste of another Castlevania 1 track being rearranged for Smash Bros. Ultimate. Out of time in this case. Out of time the song, that is. We're nowhere near out of time for this video, as we're still just getting started. Once in a blue moon, Simon's immortal right The same rearrangement we heard earlier of the original Castlevania's Nothing to Lose returns at around the 5 minute and 5 second mark, when the Direct starts going into detail about the role Dracula himself plays as a stage boss. Alucard, son of Dracula, will land his steel in Then, at 5 minutes and 38 seconds, we switch gears to an epic rearrangement of Dracula's castle from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is a natural fit for the reveal of that game's protagonist Alucard as an assist trophy. Like other assist trophies, he's susceptible to attack and KO as well. Nevertheless, he'll prove to be quite challenging. The vampire hunter who starred in classics like Castle A general overview of Richter closes out the Castlevania focus portion of the Direct, and as such, the same rearrangement we heard earlier of Divine Bloodlines from Castlevania Rondo of Blood returns here at 6 minutes and 6 seconds. All set him apart. Besides, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate version of Simon can perform moves derived from Richter in his original games, so it's hard to say who's really echoing who. Moving on from Castlevania, at 6 minutes and 53 seconds, a subtly new rearrangement of Id Purpose from Fire Emblem Awakening accompanies Krom's reveal as an Echo Fighter. In fact, the differences are so subtle, at least in the parts we've heard so far, that I need to take a quick detour here to issue a minor correction for my original music identification video. I 
I mentioned in that video that the original game version of It Purpose was used for Robin's character trailer, and it turns out that's only half correct. I got the song right, but rather than the in-game version, Robin's trailer uses what seems to be the same rearrangement used here in the direct for Crom's reveal. Thank you to everyone who pointed this out. Bringing our attention back to the Direct, for the reveal of Dark Samus at 7 minutes and 36 seconds, we get to hear more of Yasushi Asada's rearrangement of the Kraid's hideout theme from the original Metroid, also known as Brinstar Depths. I say more because a preview of this track has been available on the SmashBrothers.com website since E3, so make sure to go check it out if you like what you're hearing. And Dark Samus join the Different renditions of the Smash Brothers Ultimate main theme can be heard a total of four times throughout the Direct, with the first coming in at 8 minutes and 17 seconds as Krom and Dark Samus are detailed. Based on the instrumentation, we believe this might be the standard version of the main theme, likely to be used for the game's opening if there is one. All Echo Fighters separately on the Fighter Select screen, or stack them with the fighters they're based on. When stacked, you can switch between them with the press of a button. For stages, we're mainly including returning favorites. The Direct then shifts to the topic of stages at around 8 minutes and 58 seconds, which is when a new rearrangement of the Termina Field theme from Zelda Majora's Mask kicks in. While this same track was briefly teased in the character trailer for Young Link, we get to hear quite a bit more of it here in the Direct. It's no surprise to hear Super Mario Odyssey's Jump Up Superstar kick in at 10 minutes and 15 seconds with the formal reveal of the new Donk City Hall stage. But this is also an interesting case, because even though this is the original version of the song, it's arranged in a way we haven't quite heard before. While we can't be 100% certain at this point, the various instrument layers as well as the vocals seem to be somewhat interactive here, appearing to only kick in after the new Donk City band members and Pauline herself have been physically tagged by players. Whatever the case, as much as I'm looking forward to the stage itself, I'm even more excited to see, or rather hear, exactly how this works. We put a lot of effort into enhancing the look of the stages and rebalancing them as well. That said, for stages that originally appeared in the Nintendo... At 11 minutes and 3 seconds, we can hear a tune that will be familiar to any longtime Smash Brothers fan, being of course the Dreamland theme from Smash 64. But this song didn't originate in Smash. It actually began life as the Gourmet Race theme from Kirby Superstar and was rearranged by Hirokazu Ando for its Smash 64 debut. Intentionally keeping the classic look. The stage total is turning out to be pretty impressive. Let's compare it to the totals in previous games. But take a look at the stage select screen. Every stage can also A medley of the athletic and ground themes from New Super Mario Bros. 2 starts playing right after the number of stages is revealed at around the 11 minute and 37 seconds mark. This track debuted back in Smash 4 and was arranged by Yusuke Takahama. From the beginning. Additionally, you have the option to turn off stage hazards. Moving on, the reveal of the super cool Stage More feature offers up two more tracks to identify. First, at 12 minutes and 24 seconds, is Shogo Sakai's long-enduring Smash Bros. Melee rearrangement of the Brinstar theme from the original Metroid. Then, about 9 seconds later at the 12 minutes and 33 seconds mark, Ryo Nagamatsu's Smash 4 medley of the Ballad of the Goddess and Girahim's theme from Zelda Skyward Sword kicks in as Brinstar fades from view and is replaced by Skyloft. On the stage select menu. Feel free to choose any stages you'd like, and have fun! For the player who wants it all, My Music lets you... As the My Music segment of the Direct is introduced at around 13 minutes and 7 seconds, we can hear a fresh rearrangement of Splatak, the main title theme from the original Splatoon. But this isn't the first time we've heard this track, as a tiny portion of it can also be heard in Inkling's character trailer. For example, as long as you're playing on a stage based on the Legend of Zelda series, you can pick any of the tracks included from that series. More than 800 tracks. 
And if we count- Remember when I said that different renditions of the Smash Brothers Ultimate main theme can be heard four times throughout the Direct? The second of those examples kicks in at the 13 minutes and 46 seconds mark, right after the total count of music tracks is established. We think this may in fact be the menu version of the main theme, as it differs from the standard version in much the same way the standard and menu versions of the Smash 4 main themes differ from one another. This is just our own speculation though, there's no way to know for sure at this point. 28 hours worth of music. These game franchises are a big part of video Now hang on to your GameCube controllers, because the rest of the My Music segment gives us a rapid-fire smattering of seven more tracks to identify, so there's a lot of ground to cover in a short period of time. Here we go! Accompanying the town and city stage at 14 minutes and 3 seconds is Kazumi Totaka's rearrangement of the main title theme from Animal Crossing Wild World, which is returning from Smash Bros. Brawl. These game franchises are a big part of video game history, and the result is a massive library of memorable We can hear another track returning from Smash Bros. Brawl just 4 seconds later at 14 minutes and 7 seconds, with Seiji Momoi's take on the main title theme from Pokemon Red and Blue accompanying the Kalos Pokemon League stage. And the result is a massive library of memorable music. All of this packed into one game, this in itself. Hirokazu Ando's mega popular Green Greens rearrangement from Smash Bros. Melee then kicks in another 4 seconds after that, at the 14 minutes and 11 seconds mark. The Green Greens theme itself, of course, dates back to the very beginning of Kirby's career and comes from the original Kirby's Dream Land. This in itself is extraordinary. Of course, there's a sound test menu as well. Just moments later, at 14 minutes and 15 seconds, we get our first taste of a brand new take on the Parasite Queen boss theme from Metroid Prime. And as the Direct so kindly confirms for us, this rearrangement comes by way of Motoi Sakuraba. All of the tracks by Game Series. It's like having an album for each series. After that is Seiji Momoi's rearrangement of the Star Fox main theme from Smash Bros. Brawl, which kicks in at 14 minutes and 25 seconds. It's like having an album for each series. If a track has no corresponding fighter or stage, or if it's from one title rather than a series, it can be found in the other section. Then, 10 seconds later, at 14 minutes and 35 seconds, we can hear the Smash 4 rearrangement of the Balloon Trip theme from Balloon Fight, courtesy of Hirokazu Tanaka. It can be found in the other section. In handheld mode, you can play Wrapping up the tracks for the My Music segment at 14 minutes and 55 seconds is a completely new arrangement of the main theme from Luigi's Mansion, a tiny portion of which can also be heard in the character trailer for, who else, Luigi. You can sample some of these tracks on the official website. We're planning to add selections basically every week, so please stay tuned. Some of you may have experienced the game already. Next, starting at 15 minutes and 23 seconds, the entire rules segment of the Direct introduces what seems to be an all-new medley of music from Wrecking Crew. This is an oddly specific choice considering the fact that another and entirely different Wrecking Crew medley already debuted in Smash 4, but we're not complaining. In addition to time battle and stock battle, stamina battle is now treated as one of the standard Smash modes. There's a different feeling of intensity in these battles. There are other additions to the battle mode. The Smash Bros. Ultimate main theme then appears for a third time at the 17 minutes and 4 seconds mark, kicking off the battle mode segment of the Direct. We can only make an educated guess for now, but we believe this iteration of the main theme to be the Battlefield version, given its overall similarities in instrumentation and tone to the Battlefield version of Smash 4's main theme. ...players to take turns as well. We're also including tourney mode. Choose the number of players and CPU participants, and the game will automatically structure a tournament bracket. Now this next one is quite interesting. Those of you who watched my original music identification video already know that Diddy Kong's trailer uses an entirely new rearrangement of Bonus Room Blitz from the original Donkey Kong Country. But as it turns out, that was only part of the story. Not only do we hear more of this brand new track starting at 19 minutes and 21 seconds, it isn't long before it transitions from Bonus Room Blitz into Simeon Segway, revealing this track's true nature as a Donkey Kong Country medley I already know I'm going to go 8 for. Sorry, had an Andre moment there.
Moving on to the 20 minute and 24 second mark, the Pokemon segment of the Direct also sees the debut of a completely new rearrangement of the trainer battle theme from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Now if you know me at all, you know how hyped I am about this next track. Right after Zero kicks off the Assist Trophy segment at 21 minutes and 37 seconds, we hear an extremely cool new take on the Central Highway theme from the original Mega Man X. Considering the Mega Man tunes in Smash 4 were limited to just the Classic series, it's great to see the track list expanding to include the X series here in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Could this mean we'll see a few music selections from other Mega Man spin-off series like Battle Network and Legends? Only time will tell, but we sure hope so. From the Monster Hunter series, Rathalos Moving on to 23 minutes and 14 seconds, it's little surprise that the Rathalos theme from the original Monster Hunter accompanies Rathalos' reveal as both a boss and an assist trophy in Smash Bros. Ultimate. This track was originally composed by Masato Koda. Actually, he's the first character to appear as both. Before we go, I'd like us to take a quick look. 23 minutes and 40 seconds marks the final appearance of the Smash Bros. Ultimate main theme in this Direct, and honestly, we're not sure which version of the theme this might be. We just don't have enough to go on at this point. The instrumentation doesn't match what we're guessing are the menu and battlefield versions from the previous examples, but it also doesn't quite sync up with the E3 2018 version that can be heard on the SmashBrothers.com website. This leads us to conclude that it could simply be a different portion of what we believe to be the standard version of the main theme heard at 8 minutes and 17 seconds. It could also be the final destination version of the theme, but for now we're going with the former. That's all for today's announcement. The entire development team is putting all of their energy into finishing the game, so please be patient until launch day. Thank you so much for watching. The very last song we hear in the Direct at 25 minutes and 31 seconds is another brand new track. This one of course being the sped up rearrangement of the Gangplank Galleon theme from Donkey Kong Country that kicks off as King K. Rule comes aboard slams onto the screen. As the SmashBrothers.com website tells us, this arrangement comes to us from the ace duo of Tomori Kuro and Hiroyo Chiko Yamanaka, who, along with Kenji Hiramatsu, are responsible for much of the music in the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Now, while that may bring us to the end of the Direct, we're not quite done here as I still have the music for five new character trailers to touch on. As it turns out though, there actually isn't much to touch on at all, as most of these tracks debuted in and are repurposed from the Direct itself. The character trailers for Castlevania fighters Simon and Richter Belmont use the same new rearrangements of Vampire Killer and Divine Bloodlines that can be heard in their full-length reveal trailer, as well as in the Direct segment summarizing their moves and mechanics. The music for Krom's character trailer is something of a funny coincidence, as it utilizes the original game version of Id Purpose from Fire Emblem Awakening, which I originally said was used for Robin's trailer before learning that the version in Robin's trailer is actually a subtly new rearrangement. This song was originally composed by Hiroki Morishita. As you may recall, the My Music portion of the Direct revealed a brand new rearrangement of the Parasite Queen boss theme from Metroid Prime. As it turns out, the character trailer for Dark Samus uses that very same track, the arrangement for which was handled by Motoi Sakuraba. And finally, King K. Rule's character trailer uses the same new rearrangement of Donkey Kong Country's Gangplank Galleon theme that debuted in his full-length reveal trailer, which I just covered as part of the Direct itself. Once again, the ace duo of Tomori Kuro and Hiroyo Chiko Yamanaka are credited with this arrangement on the SmashBrothers.com website. And with that, this round of Smash Brothers Ultimate music identification comes to a close. But as always, we want to hear what you think. Are you excited about the new music tracks revealed as part of the Smash Brothers Ultimate Direct on August 8th? Which ones are your favorites, and what other songs do you still hope to see represented? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and all things gaming. Until next time, guys. Bye.